All right, guys, welcome. So this is my uh, Aris or Aris C two fifty V two. Um, what I'm gonna be doing here today is switching out the stock receiver down here and replacing it with an upgraded model that says that it has diversity. So this upgraded model I got from Crazy Pony, it is compatible with the AT9, AT9S and a couple other receivers. I have the AT9 so this is what I'm going to be using. And it's the R12 DSM. Cost me $17. Got it from Crazy Pony. Um, and basically what happened to this one here is I was flying around and apparently, and I did have an antenna cover on this as you can see, um, the very tip of that antenna, you can see that the tip there has an extra little uh, cord or wire on it. And I lost it and this thing fell out of the sky. It, and basically my Unify Pro, as it fell, you can see it did some nice damage to it so I've kind of replaced that with a new uh, antenna on that probably just gonna super glue it into place because it's not staying in a place very well um, as you can see I've already modified my uh, my uh, C250 V2 a little bit I put a run cam angle 2 on it and um, I've also put the TBS Unify Pro Race on it uh, as you can see, this is my first drone and I am learning and it is not pretty whatsoever. <laughs> I've got lots of electrical tape going here. And uh, I'm just kind of learning as I go replacing parts as they break. But you know, I thought it'd be really cool to have uh, some diversity. I think this uh, R12 DSM says that it can, it gets like double the range of this. I think the stock one is called the R6. DSM. So, um, from what I understand, it should just unplug and uh, plug back in, and then I'm going to have to pair it uh, with the remote, just with this little button on the side here. It says ID slash set, and um, other than that, it looks like I'm just going to have to cut a couple zip ties, unplug it, and plug it back in uh, to that uh, cable that's coming from the flight controller so uh, that's what I'm gonna do and um, I'll get back with you whenever I uh, start connecting it to beta flight and doing all of that okay um, so what I did it took about three seconds I just uh, like I said I cut those uh, zip ties off and I uh, removed the R6 DSM I hope I'm saying that right I think that's what it is and as you can see, these pins, they look pretty similar. Um, so, like I said, it looks like all I'm going to have to do is just uh, plug it back in, pair it up, and uh, then hopefully just to reconfigure it through Betaflight if I even need to do that. And uh, we'll see what happens. So, now I'm going to plug it back in, and uh, I'll see you guys on Betaflight next. Okay guys, I'm back. Um, so as suspected, it fit perfectly. Uh, pretty much a plug and play type thing. Um, and as you can see, I've got the ground hooked up to the black wire. Uh, the 4.8 to 6 volt hooked up to that red wire. And the SB um, and PPM to the yellow wire. And uh, just make sure you don't put that on upside down. I did it first and then I realized, hey, that's not right. <laughs> and uh, I actually looked at where it was coming from and verified that um, the ground and the 5 volt and the, um, I guess the signal wire is what you would call it, um, is in the right spot now. Uh, I also just went ahead real quick and I, I just dabbed some super glue on this thing. You know, I've seen videos where people are 
soldering it and doing all that. I just dab some super glue on it uh, so that when I turn it on, and it's not, you know, it's connected enough to not fry that uh, that BTX. I also took the, the props off. Make sure you do that. Um, so now I'm going to link it. And uh, hey, sorry, I don't have a really good setup here for my... Um, for my camera here, but this I downloaded this. It's the Radio Link R12 DSM, and I'm gonna go all the way down. Give you a lot of good tips on how to place it 90 degrees apart. Make sure the antenna is as straight as possible. All that. Um, I'm gonna keep scrolling down. Oh, I guess I passed it. Let's see here. Help if I look at the screen. Okay, so right here, it tells you how to match the transmitter. Place a transmitter and receiver close to each other within one meter. Turn on the transmitter. Power on the um, receiver. Uh, black button that I showed you guys earlier. Press the binding button twice in two seconds and release. Receiver lights start blinking after about eight blinks. Match code success when receiver signal always on. So I'm going to do that real quick, and I will get right back with you. Hopefully this all works. Okay, so I'm going to try and do this on video also. As you can see, it's powered up. It's got a nice light there that's saying that we've got power to it. And here's the button here. Okay, I'm going to try and do this efficiently as I can with one hand. And it says, pretty straightforward, press the binding button twice in two seconds. So let's go here. Kind of hard to... Get to but it's kind of hard to press. Let me see if I can't set this camera up here. I'm sure you guys won't be able to see this, but at least you'll get an idea of what I'm doing here. Okay, so I'm gonna press it twice. Okay, it turned red there. I, it says it's supposed to start blinking, so I don't think I did it right there. Okay, now I'm back to where I need to be. It just keeps turning red. It says, press button twice and release. Receiver light should start blinking. Okay, well, uh, let me see if I can't figure this out and uh, get back with you. Okay, so as you can see now, my transmitter says that it has a signal. I It said to press it two times, but what I did was I held it. I held this for about two seconds and then it started blinking red, and then it stopped blinking, and then that's when this signal appeared right here on my uh, Radio Link AT9. Um, so I'm gonna open up Betaflight, connect my flight controller, and do all that. I'll get right back with you. Okay, so I'm back. Now, I figured something out here, very interesting. Sorry I'm holding this upside down, but uh, as you can see there, if you're reading upside down, it says blue LED S bus. So whenever I had it on the red LED, that was the D S S S F H S S whatever that is. I don't know. All I know is S bus. So when I wait, went into beta flight, nothing was happening. And I went up and I made sure that my my ports were all set here. And they were, because we got the UART uh, Serial RX good. And then I also just went to my receiver and configure my configuration and made sure that I had it in SBUS. Uh, which, if you don't know, because I had to be told this too by somebody, is here, receiver. You go to Serial, Based, Receiver, and SBUS. And then I went to my receiver, and as you can see, when I move the throttle here it throttles up left right right so um 
from what I can see, everything is armed and good to go. Yeah, there it is. I armed it. Everything's good. It's got a little power. And that's that. Guys, one thing that I, and girls, I guess you could be a girl too. Guys and girls that I want, I want to show you something. I'm going to disconnect beta flight here. The very first thing I did whenever I connected to uh, beta flight with my, this is the fly color Raptor 390 that comes stock with the um, RST 250 uh, V2 is I flashed the latest firmware. So you want to use the SP Racing F3 flight controller. The latest firmware is 3.2.1. Do not do this. You have to be on 3.1.7 for this flight controller to work uh, with uh, this setup. It took me weeks to figure out what I did wrong and why my quad was not working after I first connected to beta flight and reflashed it. So when you flash your quad, don't upgrade to 3.2.1 on SP Racing F3. Keep 3.17 or else you will not. I quote, and I, I'm, I'm serious about this, your quad will not work. It took me a long time to figure that out. So, um, here it is. Hopefully I can get some more range out of this. Uh, R12 DSM. Super easy to configure. I think it would well be worth the $18 to get an extra, I don't know, they say 500 meters out of this thing uh, laterally. Um, if you guys have any questions about me hooking up the Runcam Eagle 2 or the TBS Unified Pro and getting your OSB back when you do hook up your TBS Unified Pro, let me know. That was also a pain for me. Ultimately, it was a very easy fix, but, uh, you know, I'm learning, and this is all new to me. So, yeah, uh, this is my first video. I don't know, kind of cool making them. I hope that at least somebody uh, finds this interesting and you get a little bit of an upgrade and uh, better range out of your RS uh, uh, C250 V2. All right, well, thanks.